Hello, everyone. How are you? Welcome to episode 433 of the No Sugar Coding Podcast. I'm your host, Amber Romaniak. And I, you know what, today's conversation has been really inspired by a lot of women I've connected with in consultations, as well as in coaching programs. Um, and I'm like, I got to talk about this. I haven't really talked about this yet. Of course, as always, it's my opinion based on experience of my own healing and coaching thousands of women all over the world, but I'm, I see a pattern and I want to address it because I think a lot of people are being misled with a part of our healing and it's just feeling more of the things that we don't want. So this is why this week, uh, our episode is all about why elimination diets aren't the answer, how they trigger binges and emotional eating and restriction doesn't address the root causes. So let's explore the root causes and ideally what we want to address instead of just going on a restrictive elimination diet and then beating yourself up because you couldn't stick to it. And then being convinced or told that unless you can stick to this elimination diet for like six months or a year or however long, you're not going to like gain relief from your symptoms, which is false. Um, so I'm going to dive into all of that right away. I have so much to share and so much to say. Um, but a couple announcements as we get started before that. So of course the show notes for today's episode can be found at amberapproved.ca forward slash podcast forward slash four, three, three, um, your last final reminder that the skin masterclass is this coming week. So if you want to come and join us for that three-day masterclass to get all the answers about your skin breakouts, acne to clear skin, you can go to the show notes and sign up and receive lifetime access to the replays and join me live. If the time works for you. Also, if you're listening to me today and you're going, Oh my gosh, I was told to do the elimination diet. Oh my gosh. It's triggering me to binge or emotionally eat. Oh my gosh. Once I start eating the foods again, that I had to cut out. I get all my symptoms back, my bloating, my breakouts, my fatigue, my brain fog. Like maybe this elimination diet isn't the answer. Maybe there's something else. Then feel free to reach out and book a 30 minute body freedom consultation. You can go to amberapproved.ca, click schedule a consultation to fill out the form. It's 50 USD. And then we connect for the time and talk about what really needs to be addressed instead of just, you know, being put on an elimination diet. Um, so you are so welcome to reach out and do that. And I have to give a shout out to a couple of my new clients. Um, I adore, and I'm so grateful for all of you that reach out and become clients. Absolutely. And the theme of a couple of my sessions this week, you know, we, I always start each session with a celebration. What's something you want to celebrate that you're proud of that's you've done that that's happening on the journey. And one of these new clients, she was like, I have hope for the first time in my life that I'm actually going to heal, gain relief from symptoms, bad digestive issues, hormone imbalances, learn how to take her power back with her ego, heal her relationship with food, step into a level of power that she maybe didn't know existed before. And when she just said that, I have hope for the first time. Those moments, like you all have no idea how much those moments move me and are the affirming moments as to why I'm here doing what I'm doing, because that is why I'm here. I want to give you hope. I want to give you reassurance. I want to help you trust. I want to help you take action on your healing journey so that you can all live more in your power and feel more freedom with your body, with your health, with food, with your mind and, and, and the battles with the mind and then, and the belittling and the name calling of yourself and the fight with food and the fight with weight. We want to clear all that out and have you live in your power because when one of you does healing, not only does it have a significant positive impact on you, but on so many people around you, whether or not, you know, you ever say anything, it's the frequency that you're emitting with the healing. Your frequency keeps rising that positively impacts the collective of the planet. So it's very significant. And a second client, you know, and this is only after like two sessions um, or one session, rather this, this one first client shout out to her. If she knows who she is, it's such a blessing to work with her. Um, and then a second client who have only had three sessions and upon getting into celebration in the third session, she's like, my mood is significantly improving. She's like, my depression is going away. She's like, I am feeling more confident that I can actually fully overcome these binges, more energy, less cravings. She's nourishing herself more. She's like, I am in an energy, like this energy of support. And she's like, I feel so supported and so held by you. She's like, I'm just so grateful that I reached out to you. I already feel so much better. And just your reassurance that I can get there too. And so I just wanted to share this because this is only one session in, three sessions in, and these are the kinds of shifts and transformations already happening. Yes, 
every client goes on their ups and downs on the journey, but I just find the the more I connect with women, the more we do this healing, it's almost like they're shifting more quickly and or just the healing is integrating at a more beautiful rate because of you know, after 10 years, like it's, I'm more efficient in helping women and, you know, you attract your ideal soulmate. So I'm just sending you all so much love, or whether you've been a client, you are a client, you're considering becoming a client, you've come to a masterclass, you're just comfy listening to the podcast, whatever it is. I'm just sending you all so much love. I just wanted to share because again, I can't video and capture these client experiences, obviously for confidentiality. You can go and watch testimonials if you want to watch video experiences from clients, but it's like those moments where I just, it captures in my heart. And those are moments and memories that will be in my heart forever. So I just love you all. And thank you for listening to me talk a bit about that. So let's get into this. Okay. Before I go into why elimination diets aren't the answer, in my opinion, um, I want to just share that there may be some very acute circumstances where there is very acute illness or something very severe where a drastic change with food needs to be made to support something very severe. Like I have known people who have had to make massive drastic changes with their eating. If they've all of a sudden found out they have cancers that are very aggressive or heavy, heavy inflammation or heart issues that could get very serious. Um, right. There are certain circumstances where we may have to make massive changes to address a acute health issue. And I'm not talking about those experiences here. Um, I'm talking about where you maybe have hormone imbalances or PCOS or insulin resistance or um, inflammation, gut issues. Um, you've done food sensitivity testing. You have done you right testing and you have now been told or, or read on the internet and have decided like, I need to do an elimination diet because that seems to be the answer of what's going to help me lose weight, reduce inflammation, boost energy, get rid of my bloating, help my skin. Right. Um, so this seems like it must be the answer it must be about food. Um, so obviously everyone is going to navigate their health journey the way that they seek to. I'm not here to tell anyone what to do. I'm here to plant seeds and share opinions because what I have seen in countless consultations and clients is so many women who have had testing or been told by whomever they're working with. And it's not to put that person down at all because everyone learns different protocols, but a big miss in, in any kind of health community I find is that if we don't feel comfortable telling who we're seeing that we're struggling with emotional eating, binge eating, food addiction, some kind of emotional relationship with food, why do I never say eating disorder? People ask me this side note because eating disorder feels and sounds very dense, heavy, and permanent. Um, and I don't believe any form of self-sabotage with food is permanent. So that's why you never hear me say those words. I really believe emotional relationship with food is less dense and heavy and it, nothing is permanent. We can heal something if we really want to. So side note. Um, but when we're struggling with self-sabotage with food of any kind, and we're trying to chase the number on the scale, or you're like, oh, maybe if I do this elimination diet, I'll finally lose the weight. And it's like all, oh. but then what's happening is it's hard to restrict. It's not realistic. It's not attainable. And then it's actually triggering you to binge overeat and eat all the foods you're not allowed to have on the elimination. And it's fueling ego rebellion and food rebellion. It just keeps fueling your self-sabotage with food and it keeps amplifying your symptoms, making them worse makes you feel a lot of guilt and frustration around continuing to give in with food. And then it makes you frustrated because you're probably hanging on to the weight anyway and having struggles losing it. So I've had so many conversations with women that have been told they need to go on an elimination diet. Um, and that's like the first thing. And it's emotionally and mentally overwhelming and stressful because now they have to make so many changes and they don't even know what to do. And they weren't equipped with what to do. It's just like, you need to cut these things out. See you later. Good luck. Um, and that's not setting anyone up for success, number one. Um, number two, they have emotional relationships with food and they didn't feel comfortable sharing with their current practitioner. And or if they did, the practitioner didn't understand. And it's not their fault. They're not versed in that. But because they didn't understand, they're just like, well, just try to like have willpower and, and try to follow this so that you can make the changes. Um, and number three, as I'm always saying in this podcast, I think it's so important that we need, we understand like what are the root causes of what's fueling the inflammation, the hormone issues, the fatigue, the low energy, the, the gut issues, the skin issues, right? The cravings, et cetera. And just cutting out a bunch of stuff is not going to fully resolve that. And like I always say, our thoughts and beliefs are dictating the way we behave and do or don't show up for ourselves. And so if we are in this space where we are 
um, you know, emotionally eating, binge eating, we're overbooked, we're people pleasing, we are, you know, in, in business career with kids, whatever it is, and you're barely getting enough sleep, you are overworking yourself and you're overwhelmed in your schedule and you are people pleasing and trying to prove and be perfect. And your ego is trying to make you feel guilty for taking time for yourself and convincing you that you can't have it all and you either have to suffer. And if you want your health, then you have to, you know, sacrifice your business, your career, your relationships, which is so false. We get to have it all. And there is a dance, an aligned dance for us all to step into with a state of balance that feels good for us. And, and that balance may go off a little bit sometimes, but my whole point here is it's a huge mindset game. I was chatting with another client about this and, you know, she's starting and and growing a business and she is overwhelmed and stressed and her hormones are, you know, a little or a lot out of whack. And she's like, well, how come they're so off? Like I eat good. And I'm like, yeah, but you're literally, your body is so exhausted. We need to look at your schedule. We need to look at your mindset. She felt guilty about, you know, taking time for self-care, all this. We need to work on this because until you address the mindset, the mental, emotional root causes of your physical symptoms and, you know, look at, okay, well, what, what other physical imbalances are fueling your physical symptoms and what energy stuff is going on? Like, are you the sensitive empath? right? And you are taking on other people's stuff and that's stressing out your nervous system too and feeling inflammation, right? Like we want to address those things because how is an elimination diet itself going to help you deal with being an empath and protecting your energy? How is being struggling with emotional eating and going on elimination diet going to help that? It's usually just makes it worse, right? So it's just so important to understand that it's, in my opinion, a very unattainable, unrealistic thing to ask of most people. And most people are already caught up in an all or nothing, you know, mentality with food in their bodies and elimination diets are very all or nothing. You have to cut certain foods out to get X result. And if you don't, then you get hard on yourself. You beat yourself up. You think you're the failure. You are. I was even told once I remember before I knew anything about what I did, I went and got an iridology exam where they look at the eye. And then she's like, you've got bad candida. Your estrogen's really low. And then she literally wanted to give me like 20 supplements. And she's like, if you don't do this and eat this way and take these, like it's never going to heal. And that just felt very disempowering. It's different to say, like, I would encourage you to do this. You know, I would encourage you to work on your mindset and heal your people pleasing and build your worthiness so you can live more in your power, because that's going to help you on your healing rather than saying like, if you don't do this, nothing's ever going to change. There are some circumstances where when the ego is getting like really, really, really triggered and like really you know, resistant that we have to kind of directly call it out. But yeah, it's just very rigid, very limiting to tell someone like you have to follow this protocol and like eat this way or it won't change. Especially when like for me and for, for everyone that I talked to, it's like mindset. I was insecure. I felt unworthy. The reason I had all these issues is because I was binge eating and hurting my body and trying to chase the number on the scale and I didn't feel good enough, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So how was taking these 20 supplements and following an elimination diet really going to help me? Right. And it's like when I, um, also just to share one other example, cause I went through this like big time when I was binge eating and I had a candida test done to see if I had unhealthy gut flora. And I did, I had the worst case they'd ever seen. And I didn't feel comfortable yet disclosing that I was struggling with binge eating and food addiction. And I feel like even if I did, it still would have been like, well, you have to follow this because if you don't, you won't get better. Um, And it was literally told to me, and I don't suggest anybody do this, but I was given these insane antifungals on a very high dose and told to like cut out all fruit, all all starchy vegetables, et cetera. So it was like a candida elimination. And I did it for a few days, felt absolutely horrible. And then of course had an emotional eating trigger come up. And then I was like, well, F it, I'm going to eat whatever I want. And I binge and I ate all this stuff. And then that just made me feel so guilty and so ashamed. And I'm like, I'm never going to heal if I can't like stick to this, but it was so rigid and it was gross. Um, I don't, don't do that. I don't do that with any of my clients. We can't, that kind of restriction is so unrealistic and it's not, yeah, sustainable at all. Um, there's a much more balanced approach to take, but I was being so hard on myself because, you know, of what I was told. And I was like, oh my gosh, my digestion is so bad. And my cravings are so bad and my brain fog and my memory and all these things. And like, how will I ever heal if I can't address this? And it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, me, it was that I was still struggling with binge eating and anything really restrictive was triggering me. 
and that was fueling my binge eating. So those are just a couple of examples. Uh, there's many more. I had one of my clients, Alex, who did a interview with me around the podcast and a video testimonial. And she talked about how, when we first connected, she was told to go on an elimination diet for her PCOS. And she was very overwhelmed about that. And it was triggering her to binge. And the first thing I said, when we started working together is we're going to stop that. Right. I would say like, are you open to not doing something so restrictive and instead following something that feels more doable because it's triggering your binge eating. And then like, we need to deal with the binge eating. Cause that's, what's fueling your inflammation and your hormone issues and stuff. And as we, as she overcame the binge eating, she started ovulating and her symptoms really fell away with PCOS. And she, she just turned into a whole new woman and the elimination diet didn't do anything, but make it worse. So it's just more proof. Right. So I just don't think that they're the answer. And you might say, well, you know, Amber, you, when you were healing your binge eating, you cut out sugar, wheat, and dairy. Isn't that elimination? Well, there is different, this is a different circumstance. So I was addicted to refined sugar and the casein in the dairy and the, the gluten in the wheat. I didn't cut those out per se, because it was like, well, I, I was getting bloated from them, but I was also eating copious amounts until the point where I was sick. Um, so I chose at the time to cut them out because I was having trouble not binging. If I had bits and pieces of them there, they trigger me into such a massive dopamine high and such an urge to binge that I was losing control no matter what. So I chose to minimize my intake of those for a while because I was just so vulnerable to food and my food addiction and binge eating were so severe. Now you don't have to do that necessarily. I have had some clients who don't have to really get rid of anything, but some people go, wow, I feel more clear. My digestion's better. I'm less inflamed. I'm less puffy. If I have less refined sugar or less gluten or dairy or whatever the things are for you, but it's, it's different for each person, but I don't make anyone cut anything out. Just I've talked about that before, but that was a personal choice that helped me gain traction with my healing. I have them here and there, but personally we feel better not consuming a lot of wheat, dairy, and refined sugar. Here in Canada, in North America, there are GMOs. There are heavily sprayed crops. Um, the food quality here is far different than in Europe. In Europe, they have banned a lot of the garbage stuff that they have here in North America. So one of the biggest reasons why I choose to minimize my wheat, dairy, and refined sugar intake is because these the, the way it's processed and grown and what it's put into are all things that make me feel tired and brain fogged and it lowers my frequency. And I like to stay in a specific frequency and to hold space and feel good. And those things just don't do it for me. And lastly, I don't want to give my money to companies who are part of the corrupt crap. It's just as simple as that. There's so many companies that literally want you sick because then you need big pharma. They want you sick because then it calcifies your pineal and it lowers your frequency and it just does all kinds of stuff. And I don't want to um, fund those corrupt systems. So that's another reason why I choose to not consume those things. And I'd rather make my own. I have so many recipes and, and people that have wonderful food product companies and beverage companies that I would rather support as well. Otherwise, I just make my own. And honestly, once you start making your own and your taste buds wake up, yours tastes a lot better than most of the crap that's at the store. And you just can't go back, Right. And I love baking and cooking. I love being in the kitchen. You don't all have to do that, but it's a passion of mine. And, and so, but just explain that a bit, but essentially with elimination diets to give some examples, like there's the anti-inflammatory diet. So you're cutting out anything that would inflame your body. Um, there's like going into the um, low carb diets, which I don't suggest at all. We need good car quality carbohydrates. Oh my goodness. It messes with your cortisol so much and your energy levels and your mental clarity, right? I know everyone's going to do what they want to do. You're all on your soul path journey. You're going to do what you're going to do, but I'm just like, oh gosh, if I can help it, please don't do that. Um, yes, yeah, so there's that. And then there's like, maybe you had a food sensitivity test and you were sensitive to like a million things. And this is what's interesting that I find with food sensitivity tests. It's, it's good to do them and see where things are at. And at the same time, if you have really high cortisol, if you have a major candida overgrowth and you have a lot of inflammation in the body and your nervous system's really overwhelmed, you're going to show up with way more like red flag food sensitivities, which is like a very reactive and orange, which is like somewhat of a reaction because your immune system and your nervous system are overwhelmed and candida overgrowth. All of that is going to make more show up. So then if you try to do an elimination diet and try and cut all that stuff out, it's so overwhelming and draining and, and not realistic. And then that's just going to stress you out more and that could feel more binge eating, emotional eating and more of your symptoms. So instead it's like, 
let's address the overwhelmed nervous system, the mindset, emotional work. Let's get you grounded. Let's heal your relationship with food. There's many ways we can lower inflammation, support your gut health, balance your hormones, um, all those things without heavy restriction and elimination, more balanced approach. I really believe in a more balanced approach unless I've had clients come to me and be like, I don't want to eat refined sugar anymore. I really notice my mood. I notice how bloated and gassy it makes me. I notice that it triggers me to want to binge more. I have bad cravings. I would like to cut out refined sugar and use more natural options. And I say, okay, well, that's fine. Let's just do it slowly. I can help with, you know, alternatives. And they feel so much better and that's their choice. And as they heal, they have it here and there and they don't get triggered anymore, but they prefer the other way. So I've had that here and there where they come to me and I'm happy to assist them with that, but it's, it's different for everyone. But anyways, like the more of a restrictive meant like the FODMAP diet and right. All these different things. I know some people have to, you know, think I have to go on this because I've got to manage my irritable bowel syndrome, or I've got to manage this gut issue, but there's actually so much more at the root of irritable bowel. That's just a, to me, just such a false diagnosis. It's a pool of symptoms. And that's what they give you because they don't really know how to address what's going on when it's a series of imbalances going on with your, your gut health, your hormone health. And we store a lot of icky emotions in the gut. And if we're out of our power, our solar plexus chakra, which is above your belly button, if we're out of our power, we're constantly giving our power away, we're people pleasing, we're insecure, we're unworthy, that's going to contribute to gut issues. So it's so important that we work on the energy, the energy, the emotional and the physical, and then you can fully resolve it. I got diagnosed with quote unquote IBS when I was 18. I don't have and haven't had symptoms or any issues in years because I've been clearing out the emotions, learning how to live more in my power. Trust me. I also have my moments where I'm completely out of my power and also, right, like have supported the different digestive organs and hormones and all those kinds of things. Um, And the only time that I get a flare up is if I have a massive emotional reaction, which knock on wood, like with the tools that I have now doesn't happen very often. And, or if I were to say like have multiple days where I ate a lot of weed and dairy and sugar, cause my body's like a hell no, I don't want this. What are you doing? A little bit's okay, but like, stop. <laughs> right. So, um, I think it's just important though, that we really understand that elimination is not the answer. Um, it's unrealistic long-term It's emotionally and mentally overwhelming and hard to keep up with. Like I've been talking about, it can feel really hard to get creative, especially if you're not creative in the kitchen. And now you feel like you have to cook more, especially if you don't like cooking. Um, And one of the biggest frustrating things with it is once you eat the foods, you cut out and you get your symptoms again, the bloating, the pain, the discomfort, the brain fog, the skin breakouts, the fatigue, right? The moodiness, whatever it is. Well, then you feel so like, frustrated and disappointed like well what the heck I cut all this out and I'm still getting the symptoms and it feels hopeless and it feels like really oh like is nothing gonna work is it just me and it's like no it's not just you if I can reassure you it's not just you you don't have to be stuck with your symptoms for forever it's that there is a lot more going on than an elimination diet is going to help give you insight into help you understand and help you build awareness to your body so are you willing to look at those things are you willing to go deeper are you willing to do that because that is what's going to get you the answers right? It's like my client, Alex, I'll use her as the example who had the PCOS and was binge eating and had the inflammation, all the stuff. The elimination diet was only overwhelming her and making it worse. But when she actually decided to go on the journey and address the roots of her unworthiness and her body image issues and heal her relationship with food, and we do it at a a pace, a gentle pace that feels good for you, she, it completely changed her life and she stepped into her power and she's so confident and like, free of her symptoms and and so in such a state of optimal now, right? And her symptoms are gone. She didn't just gain temporary relief. They're gone. So with elimination, you may have some temporary relief, but it comes back because it's not actually addressing the roots of your symptoms. Now, elimination diets can create food fears because now you're maybe fearing the foods that you've cut out that if you have them again, that it's going to amplify your symptoms. Your bloating is going to get really bad. Your eczema is going to get really bad again. Your pain is going to get really bad again, whatever's going on for you. And then you fear it. It could even be healthier foods like bananas or bell peppers because they're a nightshade, but not everyone's reactive to all the nightshades. Um, only certain people, right? It may be oatmeal. It could be fats. It could be proteins. It could be like for a while when I was starting to overcome binge eating, I had a fear of sugar. I was like, oh my gosh, if I start eating this, I'm going to lose control. And then I had it here and there. I was like, wow, I didn't lose control. And you start to build this confidence. But 
like food fears sometimes can come in and then we have to overcome those. It could be nut butter, right? So, and I get it. Sometimes if you have an allergy, obviously you can't eat the food or your celiac or whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about where there's all these symptoms and it seems like the option is elimination diet. It's like, well, there's probably a lot of other things to do. Um, elimination diets fuel the all or nothing mentality. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that right away and the binge trigger, how they trigger binges. Um, like I've been saying, maybe for acute health issues, but it feels very disempowering if you're told this is the only way you're going to gain relief. Um, this is not the only way you're going to gain relief. There's always many different ways that we're going to gain relief and many different paths that we can choose. Um, but ideally, we want to choose a path where we're addressing the root causes, right? And there's many ways to approach that. Um, and elimination diets can trigger binges, emotionally eating, overeating, and relapses of self-sabotage with food. So let's talk about that now. So elimination diets can really fuel the all or nothing mentality because it's like a diet. You have to eat this way and cut out these foods to gain relief from your bloating or reduce your inflammation or this or that or whatever it is that you're being told you need to do. Now, when you're given this circumstance, right, you, you may feel pressure, you may feel stressed, you may think, oh my gosh, the only way I'm going to gain relief is if I stick to this. And then there's stuff in the lunchroom that you quote unquote, aren't supposed to have, but you're like, oh my God, I want some so bad. And then you have some, and then you feel guilty. And then you're like, well, F it. I already had that. The day is ruined. I've messed it up. I might as well have more. And that fuels the all in the binge, the overeating, the overconsumption rather than just having a little bit. Or maybe then you're like, oh my God, now I messed up. And you get really hard on yourself and that ego. So hard on you telling you you're never going to heal. Nothing's ever going to change. Like you're going to be stuck with this forever because you don't have the willpower. See, I told you, you couldn't do it. But that's not you, that's your ego, that critical voice in the mind. And what would be really helpful for you instead of an elimination diet is actually working on that voice and taking a more balanced approach with the inflammation, the gut issues, whatever it is that's going on for you and actually learning how to live in your power. Because if you feel guilty eating certain foods or you feel guilty because you had something you shouldn't have had on your elimination diet, that is a mindset piece. And that guilt sits in your gut and fuels your inflammation and fuels your symptoms. So it's so important that we work on the mindset because otherwise the more triggered our mind, the more amplified our physical symptoms are going to be. Um, of course, if we're in an all or nothing mentality, well, it's either all in on the diet or I'm all about losing control of food that is binging and restriction that is emotional eating and restriction that is all or nothing rather than finding the balance in the middle. Like I was just talking about, um, elimination diets can trigger food fears and food rules. And then if you have that food, you may get triggered into the all or nothing mentality. It's like, I'm not supposed to have, I don't know. I'm not supposed to have high sugar fruits and vegetables. Um, and then you end up having a banana or you have carrots or sweet potato. And then you're like, F it. And then you're like, I'm going to go get fast food. I'm going to go get chocolate. I'm going to go get candy because I'm going to just have a free for all today and try again tomorrow. But then tomorrow your cravings are worse. Your blood sugar is messed up. You feel more puffy, more inflamed, more guilty. And it feels harder to attain the next day. Right. Um, elimination diets fuel rebellion, right? You have a bad day. You're like, I'm not supposed to eat that. Oh, I am definitely going to eat that out of spite because I need a break. I want to feel good. And that's going to make me feel good. And that's the only thing that's going to make me feel good. And this is the dialogue of the ego. I promise I'm going to record the episode where I have a conversation with my ego. It's going to happen. It's going to be raw. I'm excited. It's just going to help you have better awareness around your ego. Um, maybe I'll do that next week. Maybe we'll see. But yeah, it's the ego. We have to be willing to work on the mindset while we're doing the physical healing. And then there's the whole energetic aspect and spiritual aspect. And as they say that three, 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 so that's just confirmation from the universe. But that food rebellion, anytime you are a food rebel and you have an emotional relationship with food and you're told you're not supposed to eat something, that ego is coming in and going, oh, don't tell me what to do. I can do whatever I want. And that's not helpful either. Um, emotional eating and binge eating can be triggered by elimination diets because when you're given these rules, if you can't have this, you know, you start to convince yourself this is bad and it could be a healthy food. And it's like, oh my gosh, carrots are not bad. Eggs are not bad. Like cashews are not bad, but you know, yes, for you, maybe you're having a reaction to them, but there could be multiple reasons for that. So can you not label these foods as bad that you're eliminating? We want to actually get to the space where it's like, there is food. 
I want to choose to put the foods in my body that nourish me, give me health, vitality, support my healing, give me energy that I really enjoy. And I also can choose to enjoy a mindful indulgence and enjoy the best of both worlds. And we want to get to this place of balance, but it's getting to that place of balance where that's actually your reality, which you can all create that as your reality. But we want to take that, oh, well, this is bad. So now I'm going to feel guilty and I'm going to beat myself up and be hard on myself. That takes time to shift though. When you've been in this diet mentality or elimination diets, because it's your health, you're like, well, I do feel bad. I want to feel better. And I gave in again. And that probably delayed my healing for another week or two. And I feel really bad because I don't want to hurt my body. I don't want to make the symptoms worse, but man, like this is really hard to, you know, follow. It's not you. It's that a lot of these things that we're given are just not you know, especially if we have an emotional relationship with food and a really loud ego, which, you know, we all start out with that. It's just, it's a lot, it's complex and it just messes with the mind a lot, which messes with our behaviors and our relationship with food. Um, you know, when we have, like I've been saying a really loud ego, it can be really hard to stick to an elimination diet because the ego is telling you you won't be able to do it. You can't attain it. It's too hard. And then the ego is telling you you had a bad day or you deserve a reward. You should go eat that thing. And then the ego is like, shame on you for having that. You should feel guilty. You messed everything up. You're never going to heal. Like the limiting enablement of the ego. It's like both limiting and enabling is enablement. Even a word. I feel like I just made that up. <laughs> um, but it's like both, right? It's really the Jekyll and the Hyde, but we all have one and it's a great teacher. And it's so great to learn how to live more in your power. And of course, when you're told that nothing will improve unless you follow it, that's very rigid and disempowering. And that just triggers the ego more. And then if it doesn't work, you're just like, I don't feel like there's anything else left. What can I do? I feel like I'm going to have to suffer with these symptoms for forever. No, you're not. There's always something. And I just encourage you that you do your homework and connect with the people, the practitioners, the people that can support you that feel resonant for you, right? I know some of you may listen to this podcast for a very long time before you finally reach out for support. And some of you, it only takes a day or a week or one episode to do so. It's your choice and your path and you're gonna choose what feels best for you. And if you go in and get the elimination diet thrown at you, you may wanna consider if that's the approach and that's the kind of support you want or if you wanna explore something deeper and, um more like complex to address all these issues, right? Um, Because we can't quick fix our way out of emotional eating or binge eating or our hormone issues or our gut issues. This, If it only gives temporary relief and then you go back to your old habits or foods and all the symptoms come back, it's just frustrating. And you're just like, oh my gosh, I just spent that money, that time, whatever. And I'm back to square one, what it feels like. You don't have to stay in that You just want to find the people that can help you address the roots, whoever that is. It's me, someone else, a group of people, like pick that path and and give it a try. So now let's talk about, you know, why restriction doesn't address the root causes, right? And what are the root causes? So I've already talked about the ego mind. So our, our thoughts and beliefs dictate our behaviors in the way we do or don't show up for ourselves and in our world. So if you're in a state of unworthiness and you don't feel good enough and you're constantly comparing yourself and putting these insane expectations on that you should be by a certain place in your life by now and have a certain amount of success, money, attention, right? And you're not there and you're being really hard on yourselves. And so you're punishing yourself with food and then you're punishing yourself with restriction and you're then feeling the need to people please and overgive and try to strive for perfection. But you're just constantly fighting with yourself and your ego just being a huge douche for lack of a better word. I said that earlier to a client and she laughed and yeah, the ego can feel like a huge asshole sometimes. I'm not going to lie. However, when we start to understand that it's a teacher, it does help a little bit. But when we're in this place, an elimination diet ain't going to do anything, ain't, it's not going to do anything for you to help you deal with your ego. And in fact, if you fail with elimination, your ego is going to use it against you and go, you can't do that either. See, I told you. And if you believe your ego, you are going to give so much of your power away and it's going to drain you and contract you and make you feel so small when it doesn't have to. So to me, working on the mindset, getting support with the ego, the mindset is one of the biggest pieces to really assist you on this journey and quick side note coming probably in like September, which is next week. But as we go into September, I'm going to start talking about the kick the sugar program more, um, which you're like, uh, kick the sugar. Are you cutting out sugar? Well, it's more about understanding how to overcome your cravings and have a healthy relationship with food and balance your blood sugar. 
Um, but I'm going to actually bring back my group mastermind, which is a mix of one-on-one support and group. So heads up, like things like these ego mindset conversations, obviously I do this in one-on-one, but if you're like, I want group, something that, you know, I can be with other women and learn from them. That's going to, I'm going to be talking more about that. And I'll probably, we'll dive into launching that either in November or January, but just a heads up, if you want to get in on that and get the details, just email me info put the subject line mastermind, and then I can give you more information. Um, But dealing with the mindset is a big part of your healing because it's stressing your nervous system, it's messing with your hormones, it's messing with your digestion, it's fueling inflammation, it's impacting the way you're behaving with your relationship with food, it's fueling the binges, the emotional eating, the restriction, hopping on another diet that isn't going to work again, having you be critical with your body, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We've got to deal with the unworthiness and the inadequacy that you're feeling with yourself, your health, your body, et cetera. Now, other root causes that are important to address, the actual roots of your gut issues, the gut flora stuff, the liver stuff, the low stomach acid, right? You're eating and not being present. You're not chewing your food properly. You're drinking way too much water with your meals. You are eating a big steak and then you're having like fruit and dessert afterward and you're so bloated and gassy. Like there's different things we need to actually look at with digestion, eating enough, right? Maybe inflammation is a root cause. Well, what fuels inflammation? Inflamed thinking, lots of suppressed anger, frustration, irritation, guilt, worry, fear, um, gut flora issues, liver issues, poor detoxification, sluggish lymphatic systems, mindless eating, binge eating, emotional eating, high cortisol, hormone imbalances, heavy metals. Like there's so much there rather than what just an elimination diet is going to do. Hormone imbalances are root cause, thyroid issues, cortisol issues, low testosterone, low progesterone and estrogen, estrogen dominance high inflammatory markers, depletions with your B12, iron, magnesium, et cetera. We want to actually address that root rather than just cut stuff out. If your nervous system's overwhelmed because your mindset, your emotion, your ego is so loud, right? You're self-sabotaging with food. You don't like your body. You're feeling insecure. You're chasing numbers on the scale. We want to regulate your nervous system. You're overbooked. You're overworked. You're not getting enough sleep. You don't have any balance. You're not taking any time for yourself because you feel terrified at the thought of doing so. And you feel guilty thinking about making yourself a priority. That stuff must be addressed if we really want to see the hormones balance, the inflammation lower, the digestion get better. So if you're trying an elimination diet and you're not getting the results and you haven't addressed these pieces, I highly encourage you to do so. Now, it may feel uncomfortable. It may feel emotional, right? However, it's your health. And if you want relief, like, trust your body, trust the path. It gets easier and you will not regret doing this deeper work. One session, she feels hope like she never has before. One of my clients, another feels better energy, better mood. Depression is going away. Two sessions. Like that's what gets to start to happen to you. Don't you want that? Why would you want to sit in suffering and be like, I have to just stick with this elimination diet because I'm too afraid to deal with my emotions. I get it. You have fear. It's uncomfortable. What if I fail? All that stuff. We've talked about that. We know about that. You can either continue to let your ego call the shots and run the show and stay in that place and have unnecessary suffering, or you can take a step forward. And for those of you that are like, well, maybe right now I can't invest in one-on-one sport. That's okay. There is everything from this podcast to free masterclasses to $22 up to $149. There's all kinds of stuff that you can invest in, right? If you want to start with something small, but the podcast is here. There's always lots of prompts for you to write notes with journals, questions, et cetera. The membership, you can come and join the Body Freedom membership. It's 44 USD a month. You get access to the entire archive of recordings, which there are dozens of them. Self-care sessions, tapping, mindset, meditation, breath. We talk a lot about the ego and physical health and energy and all kinds of things. 44 USD a month, or you can do a three month or a six month and save. And it's like, I think it's $99 for three months. Like such a freaking good deal. So you can go to amberproof.ca click online programs, click the membership, and you can go and do that. Like that would be a really powerful place. I've had some women come in and they've been in for a few months now and they're really loving it. Right. So food for thought, there's all kinds of things available depending on what you want, but we must address the roots, the roots of the digestive issues, the inflammation, the hormones, the mindset, the nervous system, the roots of what's fueling your emotional relationship with food, what's fueling your binges, what's fueling the emotional eating, right? I will help you get to the roots with confidence. And I'm so grateful that I went through the experience I did because I can help you dissect any trigger that you have and help you get to the root of it and help you understand it in a way that is going to help you catch it the next time and either fully catch it and overcome it the next time or kind of catch it. And then the next time overcome it, 
right? And then be free of it. Your emotional eating and binge eating triggers have so much to teach you. They're essentially just lovingly showing you where you might be out of alignment with yourself, whether it's physically, emotionally, or energetically, or certain things in your life to help you clean it up and take your power back and be more in your integrity and have more confidence. Like that's the power of all of this, right? It's only for your benefit. Um, so are you willing to work on that, right? Addressing the root issues with body image insecurities, weight insecurities, that kind of stuff, because diets and restriction and over-exercising and then falling into binge eating and negative self-talk, all your cells listen to your thoughts and your thoughts are, your cells are listening to your body. And if you're constantly saying mean things to yourself and putting yourself down and belittling your body and being critical and holding back, living your life because you don't like the way you look. And then you think an elimination diet is going to fix all of that because, oh, if I can just get my inflammation down and finally lose weight, I'll finally be happy. Well, I mean it with love, but that's not going to quiet your ego. You will have the same insecurities once you lose the weight because they're there either way. People pleasing doesn't go away once you lose the weight. Perfection doesn't go away once you lose the weight, right? Being a sensitive empath and not knowing how to manage it doesn't go away once you lose the weight. So be willing to heal your relationship with your body, to learn how to love yourself, to help feel safe in your body and regulate your nervous system. And as you feel safe and you actually learn from what your weight loss blocks are, right? Those protective pieces and you heal those, you're going to have so much freedom and ease. And yes, with losing weight, you feel physically better in your body, but you're also going to feel the emotional and energetic security. And then you're going to be able to maintain that safe zone for you, right? With the release of the protection rather than gaining and losing and gaining and losing and going back and forth. Right. And then you stop chasing the numbers on the scale. And what's at the core of all this, the unworthiness, not feeling good enough. An elimination diet is not going to help you feel good enough. It's not going to help you fill your void. It's not going to help you heal your wounded inner child and your past memories and help you step into the empowered man, woman that you want to be, right? Shout out to all the guys listening. I know you're here and I'm so glad that you are because this, it doesn't matter whether you're a guy or a gal, like this message is totally relevant for all of you, right? It's mindset. It's the behaviors where you are not showing up to take care of yourself. It's your beliefs. It's your sense of security or lack thereof within yourself. And we all start somewhere. Try to not be hard on yourself for where you are. Don't compare your journey to anyone else's. Um, but I hope that you can take that I am living proof that so much can shift and change when we do choose to, right? Like really get into the roots. And when you're, in, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat chakra, when you're an empath and you're sensitive to energy and you don't know how to manage your energy and you're going out and then you feel like crap and you come home and you're drained and you feel angry and exhausted and then that triggers you to want to binge, an elimination diet isn't going to help you learn how to manage your energy or deal with being an empath. We actually want to teach you those tools, which I am happy to do. I do that in the membership and one-on-one -on -one coaching, right? I bring snippets of it into my master classes, but yeah, so that's my my whole point of today's conversation is there's so much more that is usually required to help us do the healing that we desire than just an elimination diet to me they're very surface level and it's very superficial and if you really want to heal deeply which i'm an advocate for that i can't do surface level i can't do superficial i'm the subs i want the substance i'm going all in with the deep healing it's always ever evolving. If I've learned anything over my last 14 year healing journey, like it's ever evolving, but the quality of life keeps improving. The freedom keeps expanding. The frequency keeps rising. The knowledge and the wisdom keeps growing. And I don't know squat really. Like if you think about it in the grand scheme of the universe and the planet, like I'm, I celebrate all of us in the wisdom and knowledge and expertise we have, but we don't, it's humbling because there's always going to be like an infinite amount to learn, which is so exciting to support our growth and our evolution. Um, but yeah, that's my little spiel on why elimination diets aren't the answer. And, you know, if you really want healing results, you know, expansion, better energy, the bloating to go away, you want to heal your relationship with food, step into your power, your confidence, your worth, quiet that ego and really learn how to manage it and truly gain relief from your symptoms so that you can feel better in your body and have a better quality of life. Are you willing to do the deeper work and just take it one baby step at a time and at a pace that feels good for you, whether it's on your own or with someone or whoever it is, right? But be willing to go beyond that. 
And, and hopefully this gives some of you reassurance that maybe you're told that this is the only way. It's not the only way. There's many other things to look at. Are you willing and ready to work on those? So hope you've enjoyed today's episode. The show notes can be found at amberapproved.ca forward slash podcast forward slash 433. And like I said earlier, if you want to go to amberapproved.ca and you're wondering if you're struggling with emotional eating, you can take the free emotional eating quiz. You can also book your 30 minute body freedom consultation. And this is where you can also click online programs and sign up for things like the skin masterclass, the body freedom membership, and the kick the sugar program coming in October. I'll have more details on that soon. Um, I'm just sending you a lot of love. I'm cheering you on. I'm in your corner. I hope you've enjoyed this. And as I always say, there's no better time than the present to take action on your health like really take action on your ego and these root issues that I was talking about to make, because that's going to give you the relief for good. So take action now, have a beautiful day, have a great next few days. And I'm actually going to be dropping a bonus episode on Wednesday with my good friend, Carly Rose, who is just incredible to chat with. You won't want to miss it. And we will chat with you then. Take care.